Hi, this is Julie with Beadaholic, and in this video, I'm going to teach you how to make the beaded flat Kumihimo bracelet sets, which is an exclusive kit by Beadaholic. So you see, you can make a wrap one, which is actually a triple wrap, as well as a single one with just the ingredients from this kit. And you can keep one, give one, wear them both together, wear them separately, whatever you like. So we've got a really pretty pink with gold beads, a white with gold beads, those great shiny gold. And these are metal beads. I'll talk about them more in a minute. Here we've got this really pretty, almost like a Wedgwood blue with the antique brass. And then over here we have a nice classic black with silver. So when you purchase a kit from Beadaholic, you get everything you need to make that project. So in this case, when you purchase the full kit, you're going to get the square Kumihimo disc, which actually will allow you to do the flat braid. You see it actually does look quite different from a traditional Kumihimo round disc, which would create a round braid. And I'm gonna open this up in just a minute and show you that there are instructions included in it as well. You're going to be getting 10 bobbins. So these bobbins open up like this. You're gonna wrap your cord and then pop them shut to keep the cord secure. This is a 10 warp braid that we're gonna be doing. You're gonna be getting a pack of big eye needles, which is gonna help you string on all those pretty metal beads. A tube of E6000 glue to secure your ends. A whole spool of cord. I'm gonna open this up so you can see there's 50 yards in here, quite a lot. A whole tube of these really lovely metal seed beads. And then we're gonna get the findings as well. So we've got enough to finish two bracelets. So we've got the cord ends, the two magnetic clasps, and four jump rings. Now, if you have already purchased one of these kits and you got the whole thing, so you've got all of these basic ingredients right here and you just wanna make another color variation, we also sell the refill, which is just going to be the colored cord, the coordinating beads and findings. So a couple different options there. Now, the things you're gonna to need to supply that are not included with the kit are some basic tools, just a couple pairs of chain nose pliers to open and close those jump rings, a little scrap pad of paper, some toothpicks to apply your glue, a pair of scissors, a ruler, and I'm gonna actually keep that right here. And then uh, if you want a Kumihimo weight, so this is an actually a uh, weight that's designed to clip onto the end of a Kumihimo braid. If you don't have it, you can also create one of your own using a binder clip. So you would just flip the binder clip over attach that to your braid. Again, this is all gonna make more sense once I start actually doing the project and then just tie a little weight to it, maybe just a little bag of pennies or something like that. So let's go ahead and actually begin the process. So you're gonna first need to determine how long you want your bracelets to be. So I'm gonna wrap this along my wrist so you can see what it looks like. So it's again, that gonna be that nice triple wrap probably have a little bit smaller than average wrist. So here we go. And you see that's nice and loose on me. If you wanted to make it even bigger, you could go ahead and just braid more here without beads. So I'm supplying enough beads to do all the beads here, all the beads here, and then you're not left with too many more. So to extend the length, you're going to need to do a non beaded portion. And I'll show you what this actually measures to help you along. So this one here measures 15 and about seven. So we're looking at about 22 inches for this right here. And then it does that nice triple wrap. And then this one you can definitely make as long or short as you want. The example piece I have here it's about seven and a half inches. So those are some numbers to keep in mind. So to make this project, we are going to open up our Kumihimo disc. And it does come with some instructions for doing the basic uh, flat 10 warp braid. It does not show you how to add the beads. You're gonna get some supplemental instructions for that. And what we want to do is we want to thread all of our, what we want to do is we want to wind all of our cord onto our bobbins. So pop this open like a bobbin. It actually is a bobbin, which is great. And we're going to want eight feet per bobbin. So just unwind it. 
Now with eight feet, you're actually gonna have quite a bit left over on your bobbin at the end. I'm just starting with eight feet, so you have the option to make this longer without having to think about how much more cord you'll need to add in this first step. Eight feet will be plenty for just about any length you wanna do. So 15, 30, 45, 60, 75, 90, and we just need six more inches. So 96. Right. To wind it onto your bobbin, pop your bobbin open. Hold it, hold just the end there, and start winding. Now the way you do beaded kumihima, whether you're doing a round braid or a flat braid, is you preload your beads onto your cord before you actually go ahead and insert it into the plate and secure it with that cord, with the um, kumihima weight. So we're gonna add a needle to the end of our cord. And these are big eye needles. I love these guys. They're called big eye because they do have a big eye. That is the eye to the needle. So that's really cool. It makes it very easy to work with a bigger cord like this. So we've threaded our needle. And now we're gonna spill out some of these beads. And we want to add 30 to this length. So one, two, three, four, five, and keep going until you have 30 and slide them down until they hit the base of the bobbin. So six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. All right, we've got 30. They're all slid down towards the base. And now we're gonna repeat this action with our remaining nine bobbins. So you'll go ahead and you'll cut yourself eight feet of cord wind it onto the bobbin until you have about 18 inches or so sticking out of the end. Place your big eye needle onto it and string on 30 beads. And you want them all to be identical and then we'll be ready to go ahead and tie a knot and insert it into our plate. I've progressed and you can see that I have my 10 strands of cord on the bobbin, eight feet each with 30 beads on each. So these are all ready to go now. I am also standing so that I can show you how to do this. So what I did is I have about maybe 15, 18 inches of cord hanging off of the bobbins with all the beads down at the base. And you're gonna be able to adjust these as you go. So we're just gonna make a simple overhand knot with our cord ends. And we're just gonna pull that. So we've got that end. And that eight feet was plenty, so don't worry if you have a couple inches sticking off here. It's gonna to be totally fine. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna hold the disc with the uh, smaller numbers, so like one, two, three, up top, the capital A, B, C alphabet on the left, the lowercase on the right, and then down here at the bottom we have 11 through 20, and you're gonna be paying attention to all of these as you do your braiding, which I'm gonna explain, and is also actually really nicely explained here in these instructions as well. Feed your knot through the center hole. And you can just hold it right now. You don't have to clamp a weight to it. Now all your strands have beads on it, which is great. So you don't have to worry about positioning certain strands with beads and certain without in different places. And we're gonna start by having a strand up here in the eight notch. So just go ahead. These are cut, so you just pull it. So it just holds it in place. You don't have to pull it too much. It's nice and it anchors it. We're gonna have another one in the seven. Another in the six. And it's okay if these crisscross a little down here. It's not gonna affect your braid because you're gonna do a little bit of braiding anyways so that's gonna eventually be cut off. So another one in the five, the four, and the three, and then once I have them all placed, I'm gonna adjust them. Right now I'm just making sure that they all have a, a little home. So you've got six up top, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight, and then your four are gonna go at the bottom. Okay. 
So on this one, we're going to do 17, 16, 15, and 14. So 14, 15, 16, 17. So that is your basic lineup. Six on top, four on the bottom. If you ever pause with your flat braid kumihimo, make sure that you have this orientation. I'll let you know where you're gonna start when you pick it back up. So we've got all of these guys hanging, and for me, that's a little bit long. So what I'm going to do, I'm just gonna take my bobbins, pop them open, and wind a little bit more, just so they're not so long. The longer they are, the easier it is for them to tangle and wind around each other, which just ends up taking a little bit of extra time to have to untangle them as you go. And they make this wonderful clanking sound of the bobbins hitting against each other, which I kind of love for some reason. I was doing this with my son around and he was pretending to be a kitty cat and hitting these. <laughs> he was patting at them, which was actually quite adorable. So here we go, we're all set. So that's what it looks like. And we are ready to put our weight onto our knot. So here we go, we're just gonna Stretch that out, flip this over, and just clamp it to your knot. And then that's gonna help for it to feed the actual braid through the center. So the braid is gonna start to form, go down through the center and hang out down here. And the weight is gonna help to keep your tension even and to feed that braid through. So to begin, what we're going to do is do some non-beaded braid. And this is actually gonna be the portion then that you end up putting into your end cap here. So take the five, so the strand that's in the five notch, and pull it over to the lowercase e. Now take the strand that's in the six notch and pull it over to the capital E. Take the 15 and place it in the five notch. Now take the four and pull it down to the 15. Take the 14 and pull it up to the four and the three down to the 14. So we just did the left side. Now we're gonna do the right side. We're gonna take the 16 and pull it up to the six. The seven down to the 16. The 17 up to the seven and the eight down to the 17. And then we're gonna take our lowercase e, put it up to the eight, and our capital E up to the three, and we are back to our starting point. So it can seem a little bit overwhelming to begin with. It does start to really make sense. I'm gonna do a couple more rotations here, but basically what you're doing is middle strands over to the sides, and then you're working the left half, and then you're working the right half. So let's do that again. So the five goes over to the lowercase e. The six goes over to the capital E. Then you've got these two now exposed, so we're gonna work the left side. So the 15 goes up to the five, and you've suddenly created a gap down here, so you just pull your work into the left. You pull the four to the 15, again, work to your left. The 14 up to the four, Again, just go over one to your left, the three to the 14. So the left half is done. Now we're gonna do the right half. We're gonna do the 16 up to the six. Go over to your right now, the 17 down to the 16. Go over to your right, the 17 up to the seven. Again, just go over to your right, and the eight down to the 17, and return your ease back up top. So the capital E over to the three. Another full rotation has been completed. And that is it for this entire bracelet project. That's really all you do. There is a little difference just in the beads sliding down the strands when you start to add beads, which I'm gonna show you in a minute. But the basic braiding pattern never changes. Even with your beads, you're still gonna do this exact same pattern. So I'm gonna show it to you another time. So five, 
to the lowercase e, 6 to the capital E, and then working to the left, we're going to do 15 up to 5, go over to your left, 4 down to 15, go over to your left, 14 up to 4, go over to your left, 3 down to 14. Now to do the right side, 16 up to the 6, go over to your right, 17, I'm sorry, 7 down to 16, go over to your right, 17 up to 7, over to your right, 8 down to the 17, and then lowercase e up to the 8, capital E up to the 3, and another full rotation is done. So we just did three full rotations, and you can see your braid has started. So that is the basic technique, and you're going to want to do braiding without beads for a good several inches. And also depending, remember we talked about to begin with, if you do want this to be longer, you'll want to have more right here between the end piece, the little finding, and the bead. So you can really make it as long as you want. It's just it's at this stage that you make that determination because you're not going to be able to go back and add more to the beginning here. So let's say you want to add three inches to your bracelet. You'll want to make sure you have an extra inch and a half on each side. So you'd add that extra inch and a half here. So I'm going to do about two inches of non beaded braid because also when you do cut this there's a gluing process that's involved and I just like to have extra to work with and I do have plenty of cords so why not. So I'm going to do two inches without beads and then I'm going to show you how to add the beads. Let me show you where we're at at this point. If we flip this guy over you can see the braid starting to form and feed through the center. So this is what the flat 10 warp kumahimo braid actually looks like. Flat as its name suggests and it's really nice and soft and you've got that nice uniform braid. So now we're ready to add our beads. To add our beads, we're not changing our technique at all. All we're gonna do is when we pick up the five, we're gonna take one bead, and this is why they're pre-strung. We're gonna slide it down and let it rest in the center and then just continue over to that lowercase e like we did before. And then when we take up the six, we're gonna do the same thing. Just take a bead, let it slide down, and put it over to the uppercase E. So nothing actually changed in our process except for those two beads slipped down into the middle well. Now, even though you've got beads in all these strands, you're not gonna add any more beads for this rotation because when you do your strands up and down, you'll end up with a different strand at five or six the next time, and that's when you're gonna use those beads. So we're just going to pick up the one from the 15, carry it up to the five without any letting any beads slip down and continue with our braid as we were doing before. Nothing has changed. Oops, ha, ah, those little guys wanna be down there, but we're not gonna let them. And then 16 up to the six, 17, I'm sorry, seven down to the 16, 17 up to the seven, eight to the 17, and then lowercase e to the eight, uppercase to the three. So we finished that rotation. We've just now got those two beads trapped in the center. So for the next one, we're gonna do the same exact thing with the five, let it drop down to the center and carry it over to the E as normal. Same with the six, let it drop over and then continue to your uppercase E. And then on all of these guys, no beads drop and you continue your braid as usual. So I actually want to do a couple of these rotations because there is an instance, and it happens actually pretty frequently, where your beads don't sit exactly how you want them in the center and all you have to do is manually manipulate them a little bit with your fingers or if you want your chain nose pliers after they've already set into the well. And I'm gonna show you how to do that. So again, I just let that one drop. Let the one from the six drop. And you're gonna to start to go really quick when you're doing this. I'm doing it a little bit slower for camera, but when you start to really get into the habit of doing this and you're just talking with friends or watching TV or watching your kids or whatever you might be doing as you're doing this, it's just gonna become second nature and you're gonna to start to go a lot faster. And 
And if you need to pull it, so if this is getting a little tight for you right here, all you do is you pull on your bobbin and that releases more thread. So then it's a little bit more comfortable to work with because these do get up tight towards the Kumihimo disc plate. See how you just can easily let those center beads slip. Okay, so remember when you stop, you always want to stop with the six strands up top, the four at the base, so you know where you left off. And let's look first at what our goal is for the look of the beads. The goal is to have them all in the center. If we look right here in a nice straight line. Okay, so let's see what we've actually got once we've done our braiding. <gasps> All right, you see that they look a little wonky. They're actually in the right place. I'm gonna show you the back side too. So what you need to do is you just move them with your fingers. And I'm just helping guide them to the center and then that shifts them how they need to be. They're actually woven into the right place all along. It's just a matter of shifting them. And then you look at the other side of your braid and you can do the same thing. You just shift them. So they're right where they should be. They just aren't sitting on top of each other because what's kind of nice, it might be easy to see on this one, it's double-sided. You've got beads on both sides of your flat braid. And so you're just needing them to really sit on top of each other. And that's what you're doing with your fingers. You're just making them sit on top of each other. And so I would suggest that about every inch, you just review your braid and you just go ahead and maneuver them to the center with your fingers. If you get one that kind of catches under a warp thread, you can just use like a chain nose plier to poke it through. But if you're doing the braid in the right sequence, they're going to be where they should be in terms of the actual placement of the braid. It's just a matter of, of you know, finessing them a little bit. And that is what you do to add your beads. And so what I've gone ahead and I've done is I've done a little work off camera here and I have my braid. So it does tend to naturally twist a little bit, which can be fun. And I've finished all of my braiding. You see here, we got all those beads. And I finished all, almost all 30 beads. I had a little rogue pin in my thing. <laughs> so I've just got two left. I'm gonna show you the last two being added to my braid. And then I'm gonna show you how to start non beaded braid again at the end. And then we're gonna see how to finish this braid. So here we go, it's my last two beads of all of those. So just same as what we were doing just a minute ago. All right, so now we're back to no beads and we just continue braiding as normal. And we're just same process, but without letting any beads slip because we're all out of them. And this is where you would add that extra length to this side as well if you wanted a longer bracelet. So maybe you started with three inches or even four inches of non-braided uh, kumihimo on, or non-beaded, excuse me, it's all braided, non-beaded kumihimo at the beginning. You'd want to go ahead and make sure you have that same amount on this end. Okay, so back to my starting position and look. So there we've got the beads 
and you can see if you look really closely we've got some non-beaded started there and that's going to look like this right here where it just suddenly ends up tapering to a non-beaded part. So I'm gonna go ahead and braid an inch and a half, two inches on this side, then show you how to remove it from the plate and add your clasp and findings. Braiding is done. We're now ready to remove the cords from the disc and start the process of finishing off our wrap bracelet because this is the long one, of course. So to remove it, just go ahead and pinch your braid up towards the top pull all the strands out of their little notches, pull it through, and what you're gonna wanna do is give yourself some slack. Okay, so pull it through like so, and then what you can do is you can just cut it. And then you're gonna tie another overhand knot on this side. And you're gonna want that knot, it doesn't have to rest right up on uh, the end of your braiding, but fairly close just to secure it. And we are now, for this moment, done with the disc and done with the bobbins. So I'm not gonna show the entire process of making the second bracelet in the video, just because it's the exact same process as you just saw. What we did do though, when we loaded our eight feet of cord onto these bobbins, that means these bobbins are already ready to go for this bracelet. You have plenty of cord on it. So all you're gonna have to do is stretch out some cord, another about 18 inches, and grab that big eye needle you have and put four gold beads on each of the 10 strands. And then it's gonna be the same process and you have a focal point here that is about three inches. And so you'll just make this length however long you want for your bracelet. So let's say um, you want a eight inch bracelet and you've got three inches here, so you need each side to be two and a half inches. So then you'll have two and a half plus two and a half, which is five, and then the three, which will make eight. So just, uh, that's how you're gonna make this second bracelet. But your bobbins are ready to go. Just add four of your beads to each and you're gonna finish this bracelet. You'll notice the closure is exactly the same. So let me show you how to go about doing that and this will apply to both bracelets. Okay, you've got your cord with your non-beaded portion. So do you remember you had some plastic that your disc came in? If you've already discarded with of this or for whatever reason, or maybe you're doing a refill kit and you didn't get the disc again, just use parchment paper, a Ziploc bag, something like that that um, glue won't stick to too, too, too much. And we're gonna be using our E6000 glue, so you're gonna want just a little like post-it pad and some toothpicks. If you don't have toothpicks, a scrap piece of wire, a popsicle stick, um, all of those work. So this is a new thing of glue. If you look on the inside of the cap, there's a little point. So you turn the cap upside down and push, and that actually breaks the seal. And you're gonna put some onto your piece of paper, and you're gonna decide where you're gonna want to have your uh, end finding be. So if you wanted extra length, you'd put your glue down here. If you want it to be right up close, you'd put it up here. I'm gonna do it about right here. And you're going to just put a nice amount of glue on there and really smoosh it into the fibers. Go over it a couple times. And then you're gonna do that on the other side. And so it helps, or at least I find it helps, if you line up your two sides together so you can have them equal in terms of where you place your glue. And your end finding is gonna actually go over this glue. So you're gonna end up cutting with your scissors the glue once it's dried. So this is gonna be the placement of your end finding. So after you've put that glue on there, what I like to do, stretch. I pull it. That does a couple things. One, it makes this a little bit narrower to fit nicely into the end finding. It also just helps that glue really get in between the cords. 
and it really makes them stick, which is nice. So I'm just gonna do that with both. I wanna make sure it's not too lumpy, so you just want it to be nice and smooth. I'm gonna let that dry, and then I'm gonna flip it over and add glue to the other side as well. And it does dry pretty quickly. I'd say you don't have to wait more than about 10 minutes. It's not gonna be dry as in solid, fully cured, but it'll be dry enough to flip it over because it's drying into the fibers of your cord. So it doesn't take as long as E6000 would normally take on say, like if you were gluing a glass cabochon to a finding or something like that. All right, we're gonna wait about 10 minutes, flip it over and add glue to the other side. Let's go ahead and add glue to the other side. I put down another little glue pile here. So I'm gonna take note of where the glue started right here and I'm just gonna flip it upside down and put glue on this side. Okay, and we're gonna do that on the other one as well. So kind of note where it was and glue. I'm gonna give it a stretch again. And now I'm gonna wait. And this time, I'm probably gonna wait about 20 minutes because I'm actually gonna be cutting through the glue with my scissors and I don't wanna gum up my scissors. Now that our glue has dried, at least it's dried enough for our purposes, it's still flexible. We're gonna cut through it and we're gonna add our end pieces here. So you've got enough in this kit for both bracelets. So we're just gonna use one set we're also gonna be using a magnetic clasp and two jump rings. And then of course you have the others for your other bracelet. And these are very nice magnetic clasps. They're quite strong. I like to separate them out. It makes it a little easier to work with. So we are gonna begin by just cutting through the glue portion and look at how deep these are. So we wouldn't wanna cut back here cause we'd see all that glue. So we're gonna cut right up here. Um, not even a quarter of an inch from it because we want that glue to all be hidden. So just cut right through it and you see it won't unravel. It keeps it how you want it. It keeps that braid nice and secure. All right, we'll discard this. In terms of the tools I'm gonna be using now, I've got my E6000 still, my little pad of paper and my toothpicks. I've also brought over my chain nose pliers. I'm gonna use one to apply the little end and then I'm gonna use both of them to add the jump ring. And I have something else here and you don't have to use it. I have some tape. You could use painter's tape um, or you can just use your regular tape, uh, masking, scotch, whatever you wanna use. So we are going to, let me show you ahead of time so you can see where we're going with this. This is how we're gonna be holding our end when we place it over that uh, piece of glue. We're gonna add some more glue. When you squeeze down, it can leave little marks on your metal. It's very easy to remedy that by just wrapping your tip in some tape. I would say like blue painter's tape is best, but I don't want you to have to buy that just for this project. If you have it around, great. If not, just a little bit of other tape on there and it just helps to buffer it when it gets into contact with a metal, so it's not metal on metal. We're gonna put a little glue down and we're gonna place some glue into the well. You're also gonna be squeezing these shut. So you're gonna have two measures of security here, the glue as well as the squeezing. Okay, grab it and just slide it right over your end and squeeze. And I like to squeeze from several different angles. But you see, I'm not marking that finding, which is nice. Okay, and we're gonna do the other side. And the same thing again. Just slide it over and squeeze. If you look really closely at these, you can see they've got little teeth, which help to grip and really secure it on that braid. So that is a nice secure end. And now we're gonna add our jump ring and our clasp. So here we have an open jump ring. 
We are going to grab it on both sides and twist it open. You don't have to have the tape still on your pliers at this point. Actually, a little bit of glue came through the middle of my finding. I could just wipe it away. And then our clasp and close it. Ah, it's sticking to my pliers. <laughs> okay, let's try that one again. So these are magnetic clasps. They're very strong magnets. So you do have to just be aware that they might stick to your tools. There we go. Let's do the other end now. Same thing. We're just going to open up this jump ring. Slide it through. And close it back up. And we are done. So we've secured the ends. You see they'll just snap together like that. And then this one's still technically drying, so I'm going to pick up this one and show it to you again, the finished piece. So we have the end caps. We have the magnetic clasp in the middle. And then if you want to wrap it around your wrist, it looks like this. And then it's nice because the magnet does part of the work for you. And here you go. You've got your bracelet. I'll show you the other colorways too. Got that pretty silver and black. We've got the gold and the white. And then we have this really pretty blue with the antique brass. And for each kit, you will definitely be able to make both the wrap bracelet, the triple wrap, as well as the cute little single bracelets. And do remember, you can always, of course, look back at this video, but to be able to do the centerpiece, you'll be putting four metal beads on each of your 10 strands and your bobbins will already be ready to go with that original eight feet of cord you put on them. So just add the four beads, do the braiding the exact same way as you did for the triple wrap and also add the clasp the exact same way as well. So that process is all the same. So I hope you enjoyed this video. These are the beaded flat Kumihimo bracelet sets and they are an exclusive kit by Beadaholic, and you can find them on Beadaholic.com, and you can find many more exclusive kits on Beadaholic.com, and there are instructions there as well as on YouTube. Thanks for watching.